everybody, I'm Josh. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about open source car control. So I'm the CEO, co-founder of, of a company called PolySync. OSCC is one of our, um, one of our various products and, and right now the only open source one. So we're sort of maintaining that and giving that out to the community. So um, just briefly, what PolySync does and why this matters to us. So we build a, uh, an underlying kind of infrastructure layer for autonomous car software applications. So uh, in effect, you can think of this as sort of applying um, fault tolerance concepts and, uh, and safety concepts that have been pioneered you know, in, in distributed computing systems to the car. So we're kind of the underlying infrastructure that enables a fault tolerant central compute architecture in the car. So we think this will be completely important and, 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 uh, and critical for building autonomous cars because of course they use very powerful processors and uh, very difficult to get to safety certification with those without kind of new approaches. So, uh, but the important thing about that is that we're a platform provider, right? So, so like any platform provider, we live and die by uh, an ecosystem around us, right? We don't actually do application software. So how do we build an ecosystem is a question. So this is what we built OSCC for. So uh, three reasons. The first one is we want more startups in this space. So traditionally, automotive has been extremely close to to startups, be very difficult to build technology uh, and especially to commercialize technology in this space because it's so proprietary. So uh, what you're seeing with autonomous driving is that there's some, there's some challenges to implementing that. There's challenges to uh, f that the OEMs and the, and the tier ones, supply chain and auto are having difficulty solving themselves and suddenly this industry is open for, uh, for startups like it hasn't been for you know, maybe like 40 years. So that's pretty awesome. We want to enable more of that. We want to see bigger fleets, right? Our, our, our platform is really about achieving uh, production and, and scale. And so for us, more cars is, is better. And then finally, safer, safer testing. We, we've seen a lot of different approaches uh, working, acro work, working across this industry for four years. A lot of different approaches to getting control of a vehicle. And uh, some of them are, are um, sort of much less safe than others. And none of them really wonderful. So uh, we wanted, we wanted, you know, if you're a startup or whatever, we don't want you sort of putting like hobby servos on your car and trying to figure out, you know, how to do this, you know, in the least safe fashion. We'd like to give you an easy entry uh, to to building a safe and controllable car. So for that reason, we started with this beautiful car right here. Actually, it's kind of stretched out. Unfortunately, it's not that long in real life. Does anyone like to actually drive one of these cars? Kia Soul. Yes, one. What? It's like the most common economy car. Uh, Anyway, you can get these things brand new. We get them for like 16,500 US. Uh, and uh, you can get them on the used market all the way down. We've seen that if you want to go sketchy, rebuilt, you know, rebuilt titles after accidents and things, you can get under $10,000 on this particular car. And the key to this car is that not only is it inexpensive, it's available worldwide in basically the same configuration. It's very, very simple, so it's really easy to reverse engineer. And importantly, it has uh, electronic power steering and throttle by wire, although everybody has that. So I'll explain what those are uh, you know, in the future. So just to give you an idea of what the state of the art looks like in, uh, you know, typically, typically this, is a, this is a control robot. Actually, this is probably a half million dollar rig that like, I think this is a Ford. Ford uses to test, uh, test their vehicles. And it looks super haphazard because it is. It's all bolted onto, uh, bolted onto the car, and we've seen everything from from this type of implementation to like the hobby grade version of this, which is super sketchy, and uh, um, and then and then and then really really nicely integrated cars too. So really nicely integrated cars do exist, uh, but they're incredible. They're still incredibly expensive. So basically, you can't get into this uh, a, a controlled car that's like done well for under 100, 150 grand. So how do we solve that? So enter OSCC. So uh, let me play this video. So, how do I play it? Nope. It was? There we go, okay. So enter OSCC. So this is a 2014 Kia Soul under control by OSCC. It's using the car's own system. So power steering, throttle by wire, and then we have to add some other stuff for the brakes. But this is, this is it. So this is a guy controlling this on I, we have a game controller interface, a laptop, or whatever. But you can see there's, you know, it's very smooth and, and controllable. Uh, 
and is awesome. So that's OSCC. <laughs> uh, so how do we do it? Oh wait, how much does it cost? So normally, so normally these, these, this type of implementation, like I said, costs $100,000, dollars $150,000. You've probably seen, if you've, been, if you've seen the, uh, the cars you know, like NVIDIA, you know, and, the, and you're often seeing them in the news now, demo cars, they're always a Lincoln MKZ, right? Lincoln MKZ costs about 100 to 150 grand to get in a fully out, including the car, into a fully outfitted by wire, by wire system. With OSCC, you can do that for 10 to 15, including the car. It's dramatic, right? So, so that's awesome, and we think that it's safer. Did something funny happen, or is that just, that's hilariously awesome. That's great. Uh, so uh, a, key, a key part of this is that it's not only, not only is it inexpensive to build yourself, uh, you can build the hardware from our site or whatever or from, from GitHub, uh, but it's also all open, right? So and these, those other systems that I said, 100, 150 grand, they're proprietary. They're totally closed. You can't get into them. They often use like uh, vendor you know, specific uh, IP like interface files and things like that that they can't give away to you. This one is completely done with Arduino. So have at it. So how do we do it? Uh, cars typically have there's four there, there's there's four major modules to the to the uh, to the OSCC system. There's a steering module, a brake module, a throttle module, and then a gateway. Uh, each of these is connected up over a CAN network, a private CAN network. Everyone knows what CAN is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then, there's, and then there's an external CAN interface for control. We use CAN because it's fault tolerant. It is, it is all the wonderful things other than high bandwidth uh, that, uh, that is very low bandwidth. But uh, it is all the wonderful things. Uh, it's, it's fault tolerant and uh, you know, resilient and, uh, and cheap. So we use CAN to communicate with the modules. And like auto people get it. So how do we do steering? So steering steering's the, the key one that is difficult to control. The, the cool thing about the, the, the Kia Soul is this, is this thing right here, which is called a column drive EPAS system, column drive uh, electronic power assisted steering system. And then in Kia parlance, that's MDPS, motor driven power, power steering. So uh, Kia is a really great company. They have, uh, they have a, an online site called kiatechinfo.com. And for like $19 for 72 hours, you can have access to 100% of service, of service uh, information about the car. So all the wiring diagrams, troubleshooting stuff, uh, like very, very deep information. And we got into this thing. And what we realized about it is that uh, it's actually a very simple little self-contained system. What it has is a, uh, a brushless motor. There's a motor controller. And then there's some analog uh, torque sensors, which, which, which sense your hand on the wheel. So the way that works in typical operation is that you put your hand on the wheel. And, and if you've ever used an electronic power steering system, you'll notice it has just a little bit of like, wiggliness to it, like a little wiggly play. That's a torque, that's a torque sensor in between the wheel and the column that's sensing your input. And so its job, the, the power driven, the electronic power steering system, its job is to decrease the force that you put on the wheel, right? So I give it a little bit and it goes, oh, I want to help you, right? And that's the control loop. And so we do what is essentially very simple, which is that we spoof those torque sensors. Uh, it's a, you know, like it's a, it's basically a man in the middle uh, attack on the system. And so, <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. Uh, uh, this is a, this is, and this is kind of a diagram of it, which like looks kind of mind-bendingly confusing. But basically, what you've got is the MDPS in the middle. The, the, that's a black box to us. We don't really know what goes in there. We add a little relay here, and we just kind of switch over to the Arduino. Uh, and that, well, actually, uh, uh, we have to add part of the OSCC system adds a um, uh, uh, digital analog converter. So we go from you know pulses to uh, actual voltage. And then we're, able to spoof the, then we're able to spoof that torque control. And then what we've done, and you'll see it in the software if you get into the GitHub, what we've done is we've, we've had to, uh, we've had, had to uh, linearize the response to that system. So one of the problems with power steering is that it's try, it, it, for control, it's trying to make it feel a certain way, right? It, nice dead spot in the middle. It changes the response depending on how fast you're going. Uh, we really wanted to, make, to keep a light touch and stay very much at the edge of the system. And so what we did is we, we were able to, uh, to linearize the response of that using a velocity control as opposed to a rotational velocity control as, to a, as opposed to a position control. So the result of that is that you can command an angle for the steering wheel and it will go to it uh, at a specified speed and it does so very smoothly and accurately and, and um, that's awesome. So that's number one. Uh, that is done with 
this little guy here, the little Arduino shield. So this goes on in Uno, uh, and it has screw terminals for all the relevant sensors. We provide all the wiring diagrams and things like that. We don't specifically say how to, we specifically say how to wire it into Kia Soul, but there's some other details that we leave out uh, so that it's a little bit more generalizable. I should mention that the, OSC, the, the intent of the OSCC system is that you can apply this general methodology to other vehicles as well, but that the key is the simple one and it's cheap, so we focus our efforts there. So that's part of why we open sourced it, want other people to, to move things. Now from a safety perspective, this is the, this is, well, uh, we think that this is the right way to do this. So the important thing there is that, is that we stay at the very edges of the system. So electrically, we're as close to, we're, electrically, we're, uh, we're effectively a hand on the wheel in, in the case of this system. And so other approaches that you may have seen you know, on the internet or whatever of controlling you know, the MKZ or different things, they often use a CAN-based approach where you're spoofing CAN signals. And the problem with that is the way that it's often done is, especially for steering, is that you spoof the power, or excuse me, the, the, the parking assist system which is the system that you, know, you pull up next to a parking spot and it spins a wheel and, and parks you in it. You, you have to buy a really expensive car typically to do that because there's only a few that have that functionality. But you're also you're telling the, the car that it's driving like under five miles an hour all the time uh, and, uh, and, and, and that's what basically gives you, uh, gives you the, the steering control. So the R system doesn't require that type of spoofing. So basically we're at the, we're, by staying completely at the edge of the system, we maintain the safety case that the manufacturer intended around their, around their control system. So that's key. So, so uh, the, redundancy in those, in the, uh, the redundancy that exists in those, in those torque sensors all the way back to redundancies in the, uh, in the control system for the, for the wheel are all maintained completely. We don't spoof them in any way, but we do get full, uh, full control of this wheel. And in fact, the steering wheel in this car you know, can, can hurt you, it's so strong. So, um, as, as opposed to other systems where you end up with like a, they artificially block your, your control for various reasons. So, um, yeah, that's doing control. The next one is throttle, and uh, it doesn't really require too much more uh, uh, description than what I've already given you. This throttle is the same, the same way, although it's just, less, it's just less safety critical, right? Because throttle response in a car is less uh, immediate than, uh, than a steering uh, response. So this is a throttle, so this is just some example throttle by wire images. But almost every car, like modern car, has gone to throttle by wire. And what that means is that your foot pedal is completely disconnected from the, from the throttle body and the engine that actually controls how fast it's trying to rev. So uh, again, this is just the same type of analog spoofing attack. And in fact, we, we use the, I probably shouldn't call it an attack, um, approach. <laughs> um, uh, in fact, we use the same board. So it's the, sa it's the same deal, and then the Kia, you know, it's the same, it's even, like they're almost the same sensors. It's kind of cool. Let's see. And then finally, brakes. So brakes, uh, brakes are the problem. So uh, the fundamental problem that we're solving with cars, and that maybe everybody has, has experienced, is that there's no interface to these damn things. So you end up, you want to do something with a car, you, you have to hack it. And the only interface that exists on most cars is, is called OBD2. And, uh, and so everyone knows what that is? Yeah, everyone. So you guys are all car people. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> OB2 is, OB2 is like the only standardized interface to a car, and there's been like this massive, uh, you know, influx of startups, right, that have that have created around that one interface. So, in some ways, this is kind of a call to action for uh, a call to action for the OEMs to open up their cars and allow us to have like a developer mode in them or something like that. We'll see if that like becomes a thing. But uh, you know, a lot of them are really are super risk averse, right? But I, you know, whatever. We've been able to do that with phones for a long time, so. Um, so anyway, the problem. So the problem with these cars is that there's no interface, and that's that's certainly the case for brakes, right? Brake, so th spoofing the e-pass and the uh, and the uh, the throttle are relatively simple. But brakes get into something that's kind of ugly. The fundamental problem here is not only that there's not an interface, but that there is not the car itself doesn't typically have the facility to brake itself. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it doesn't have a facility to brake itself. So, so the problem. So, uh, the cars typically have like an ABS unit, 
uh, and the role of this AB, ABS unit in the case of an uh, analog brake system, uh, in the case of a, uh, you know, of a skid or something like that, is simply to modulate brake pressure that the driver is providing, and in some cases to provide a little bit of, a, of your own. But in terms of controlling a car, you need to have full access, you need to, have full access to, the, to the braking facilities of the vehicle. Uh, and as it turns out, Creating that actuation in any meaningful way is difficult, right? So uh, we've seen everything like you put a piston on the on the brake pedal. Uh, that's really that's it's slow and dangerous. Um, we I even tried to, we even tried to design our own sort of sort of form of that once. It was it was really bad. Uh, the way that we do this is we have to add an actuator. So this particular actuator that we add uh, is I, I probably have a better picture of this, but this is it integrated into the into the sole. Is from a Toyota Prius. So this this particular actuator is uh, you can get from in a junkyard. Costs about two hundred bucks. If you want to buy a new one, a reman, it's like a thousand. But it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a Denso unit. It's rated for full automotive uh, uh, duty cycle, which is awesome. And uh, the critical thing about this one it comes from a two thousand four two thousand seven Prius. This one doesn't have any electronics in it, so it's just a pinout basically to a set of solenoids, pressure sensors, and a uh, and a big pump. This particular unit has a accum high pressure accumulator, a high pressure pump, has like five or seven pressure sensors in it, uh, including all the all the safety stuff around that. So if you overpressurize the pump, it'll blow a seal and things like that. Uh, and then the, and then it has a set of solenoids that are rated either for continuous duty or for PWM. So that's pretty great. So what we did with OSCC is we created a board to control this unit. And I'll show you hydraulically how that hooks up. So if you thought this was just a like total uh, you know, electronics or you know, code class, this is like not it at all. So this is, requires unhooking brake lines, getting covered in brake fluid, and then hooking them up to this thing. And basically the way it works is you have your master cylinder there, your foot pedal. You have two outs. This is typical of almost any modern brake system. There's a, there's a redundancy in the brake system. Those two outs go, instead of directly to the, the stock ABS unit, which is this blurry word here, um, <laughs> this is a stock ABS unit, that usually has two ends. So rather than, again, we sort of take the man in the middle approach, what we do is we just put that between the master, we put this unit between the master cylinder and the ABS unit. Uh, there are lots of different problems in, with this that this magical box solves. So I would encourage you, though this may seem like a total hack, this is, from my experience, incredibly slick. So what this, ha what this does is two, two, two lines come out, and they come into these two, two solenoids, SMC2 and SMC1. There's pressure sensors there, uh, and those are actually continuous rated 12 volt solenoids. So what happens is you can power those up, and you completely lock out the foot pedal. Like as, as soon as those are powered up, you can't press that thing down anymore. But we can sense what pressure you're putting into it. So the first demonstration we did with this, we actually created a full detached brake by wire system in the Kia. So you can press on the pedal, and then we would actuate the brakes for you, which is kind of cool. All right, coming out of so so in, so now that the foot pedal is, is blocked off, what we do is we take our high pressure pump, we charge up our accumulator. You can see we have a pressure sensor there that allows us to uh, that allows us to modulate that pressure, and we just put it on a on a really simple loop. Uh, and then we, have, then we have four out solenoids that are just very simple, or excuse me, four fill solenoids and four spill solenoids. So very simple, we, just, we can pressurize the, the outgoing circuits or we can release them. This is very different. If anyone knows automotive braking systems, this is very atypical. So normally they have these crazy, like eight to nine solenoid systems with all kinds of crazy backwards looping things and they're very complicated and they contain a bunch of electronics that are all housed in epoxy and you can never get at. This one is just a pin out. Uh, so anyway, so the principle is very simple, right? Which is that two of these outgoing circuits we just block off, we don't need them. And the other two we pass through into the ABS unit. And, uh, and by using uh, PWM on the solenoids, we're able to modulate the pressure going in and out. And uh, we have, you know, we've tested that pretty extensively and, and it tracks really well. So that sounds complicated and, and, uh, and maybe, you know, like overwhelming, but it's actually not that hard. You put it in, you hook up our board to it, and then you, you know, run the code and, and we've taken care of the control. That's the prototype of the board. It looks gargantuan. We've shrunk this now uh, in, the, in the shipment that we actually shipped of OSCC to about 40% of that size, so it's much smaller. It does take an Arduino, uh, the bigger one. Mega. Mega, thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I put it on there and then, and then, and then have at it. So, uh, but this was, a, this was kind of a task. We have a bunch of power, uh, power systems on it and uh, the uh, MOSFETs that are you know, cooled and things like that. So you know, you'd have to do a little bit of housings and stuff to keep that in a good, good shape. We usually put it in the, in the glove box. Okay, and then finally, we have to gateway uh, into the chassis. So this is, uh, this is my gateway icon. Uh, we actually just, right now, we're thinking of building our own, but right now we just use a, um, uh, this is an open source CAN shield, which anyone who's played with CAN has probably has like five of these. Um, we just have two of these. One of them connects to the private bus that we use to control uh, the control systems, and then the other one connects to the, connects to, um, the vehicle bus. And, uh, and so what we're able to get from that is pretty cool. So we, we, there's three CAN buses on the Kia Soul. There's a C CAN bus, which is like a chassis CAN. There's a B CAN bus, which is the body CAN. And then there's a media one, an M CAN. Uh, we're currently reverse engineering the body, the body bus, but the, the control one gives us access. We can turn on and off the headlights. Uh, we, can, we can do like wipers and, and things like that. The problem is we haven't figured out yet how to do turn signals. We're getting there. But basically, you know, you know, whatever, turn on your turn signal yourself. This is a, uh, it costs $10,000, come on. Um, so a couple, a couple of these things. So this is actually where, the, where, where reverse engineering of the, of the car is, uh, is a pretty interesting task. There's a bunch of, uh, if you're familiar with automotive CAN systems, there's typically no spec to them, but they're super easy to, you know, to uh, parse off the wire. So, you know, we, the way that we, the, the way that, the only signal that we actually use for SCC through the, through the, uh, through the gateway is the steering angle. And we simply reverse engineered that from the, the CAN, um, the CAN signals. For anyone who's familiar with CAN, this particular Kia Soul is awesome. All the signals break on byte lines. There's no sharing of bytes. And uh, it's, yeah, so it's, it's super easy to reverse engineer. We just haven't, haven't done all of it. So anyway, part of why we're opening it the community, we'd love for you guys to help us. With, with that, there's certainly people that are more skilled at reverse engineering CAN buses than we are. Uh, we also get all the o, uh, OBD2 PIDs and, and uh, you know, all the, all the normal goodness that you get off there. Uh, other signals that we can have are brake pressure, we get individual wheel speeds, which is neat, and turn, turn signal status. So there's a bunch of information you get off the bus that you don't normally get off, off OBD2. So I talked a lot about safety. I talked a little bit about safety. Uh, the, o the overarching safety concept for this particular thing is, is that it, the, it, it has a fail safe mode, which is that uh, when the whole system is powered off, all the relays default uh, to, a, uh, uh, to either a normally closed, closed or normally open status. Uh, include all the, all the solenoids in the brake system power open. Basically, if you, if you hard shut down power to the system, uh, it, w it returns the car to a stock state. And so that's the, that's the overarching safety concept. Uh, we, have implemented, we have implemented manual disables so you can grab the steering wheel, you can touch the brake or you touch the throttle and it will actually, it will disable the, it will disable the system not in a hard shutdown mode. Uh, I will say that if you do hard shut it down, there's a disc, you can have a discontinuity in some of the signals and you, you can fault the ECUs on the car. But this, the, the other great thing about Kia is that you can get the re factory reset tool for like a hundred bucks on eBay. So, um, Another reason, another reason to use that fabulous little, little car. Um, from, a, from the repo's perspective, there's a, a, a few things that we comply with. We have a coding standard. It's Mizra-ish. <laughs> um, <laughs> if anyone's familiar with the Mizra C standard, it's gargantuan and impenetrable. Uh, and we didn't want to foist that out. And we also can't distribute it because it costs money. So uh, we kind of made our own version of that that just includes code examples and is simpler, a little bit more approachable, and exists in our, um, in our contributing .md file. From, a, from an actual safety perspective, some of you may have alarm bells going off and going, oh, this is not an ASL, you, you guys are, you know, uh, let's see, you would say, Arduino is not ASL D. Uh, and that's in fact true, <laughs> far from it. Uh, ISO 26262, the automotive functional safety standard does allow for diagnostic based safety systems. Uh, it's not like we have not, we're not in any way claiming a, uh, uh, an ASIL rating for this system, but we do implement diagnostics on uh, all our outputs. So, there's, so we have diagnostics on CAN, that's a keep, all modules publish, publish a keep alive. And uh, if, you miss, if we miss that for a certain period, then we, uh, then we disable control. 
uh, there's an ADC and a, and a DAC and a, P, and a PWM check as well. So for all signals that we receive, we check them redundantly. For all signals that we send, we check them redundantly. And then we have a, uh, and then we do the same thing for PWM. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's certainly not, you know, a, 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 you know, dual processor lockstep arrangement. However, it's, it's, uh, it is checking itself. And you have a, you have a, a, a driver there. Uh, and again, the, over, the overarching fallback is the, you know, the, the driver that can disable control of the system at any time, either through a hard shutdown or through grabbing the steering wheel or, or those other things. We have a code review process. Uh, you can read more about it in our, our contributing.md. We just, you know, uh, it's, a peer, it's a peer review process and we, and we maintain uh, the, the repos that we have. We actually, actually have ISO 26262 trained safety certified individuals reviewing incoming code. And then finally, we include some uh, unit and integration testing. The, the uh, important thing here is that we actually, we actually do test all, all new code revs on functioning vehicles on the road. We make sure that uh, you know, thresholds are correct and, and you know, test pass and things like that. So we have a full set of, a set of testing firmware. Also, when we build boards and ship, we run them through a, a set of testing as well. And then finally, we'll be add, adding property-based testing and chaos testing to this, uh, you know, kind of in the next few months. Well, part of OC, OCC for our company is providing us kind of a microcosm of, of learning how to build a company that can build safety-certified code. So this is a journey that companies take, and uh, this is part of our part of our, our journey. So how did we do on this? We launched in January 29th, 20, uh, on, so not very long ago. Uh, already, we have you know fairly fairly strong engagement on on our, uh, our our Git repo. I will say that we are the only people that have contributed code so far, but you know it's early. Uh, but importantly, 10x cost reduction. So for startups, this makes a huge difference. You can't you know uh, you don't have to you basically you don't have to raise money to go get your your algorithms on the road. So that's huge. We've shipped 20 kits. We, we had an initial buy of, of you know, boards that we built. We've also had a, some, we had some guy in LA build like five of them themselves, which is pretty cool feeling. And uh, we've also built four cars for different companies ourselves. So we do, we do um, car building services for our company, uh, you know, as part of, our, part, of our, part of our company. And then we also are, do we also, we also are doing uh, what we're calling guided builds. So uh, we'll, we'll have companies come in. This is, we've only done one, but we have a company come in. We actually build their car with them for two weeks. They sit alongside us. We teach them you know, all the, how to run all the wires, how the fundamentals of all the systems work. And uh, that's pretty cool because that means they can go home and, uh, and build their own cars for much cheaper. Of course, when we build cars, we charge a lot of money for it because you know, like it's work. So, and then finally, we have, you know, in terms of safety, we have fail safe and, safe, and a safety case for, uh, for this particular system, which is, you know, not, not, not only is critical, I'm not going to say it's like an industry first, but it's something that's often overlooked and I think, you know, one of the most valuable parts of this system. So what's next? Look at this beauty. Isn't it pretty? What, what car is this? Does anyone know? You guys are like not following Kia at all, are you? Uh, good, that's good. Gold star. Um, this is a Kia Nero, bask in its glory. This is a sub $25,000 uh, hybrid. That's pretty cool. Buy one for your kids. In the meantime, uh, in, the, in the meantime, it has brake by wire and it has you know throttle and e-pass, uh, all so full set of by wire controls. Which would mean, if we could figure this thing out, we don't have to add a brake actuator anymore and get our hands messy with brake fluid. We just send those beautiful can commands. Uh, problem with that is that I think it's pretty heavily we've got we like poked into it and it's pretty heavily protected on the can side. So um, if anyone's looking for an exploratory project, this is the one. We're poking into this ourselves and finding that it's harder than we thought. Uh, but what's required, Joshua? Reverse engineering of the security on the camera? Yeah, so the e pass and the throttle we think we can do the same. So the question was what's required? Uh, what's required is it just the same type of reverse, reverse engineering on the CAN bus? So the the uh, the throttle and the and the steering we think are basically the same as the Kia Soul, so we can use the same approach, which is a which is a good one. 
Uh, on the braking side, this car, this is, so Kia is starting to be much more sophisticated, so they're adding, uh, this one comes with auto emergency braking, you can get it with a radar and things like that. So, uh, and also hybrids always have a brake by wire interface because they modulate, um, they modulate the brakes between a regenerative braking from the electric motor and hydraulic braking. So, what that means is that it's a much more complex system. Uh, the, the way that they do that regenerative braking is they have a pedal sensor on the, on the foot brake, which is easy to spoof, but, in, but they double check that with a pressure sensor in the master cylinder, which is all self-contained and, and on circuit board traces. So that's the problem. So for this guy, we think that we have to have a CAN interface. Typically, those interfaces don't exist. So um, there's clearly some work to do there. Yeah, anyway, uh, we'd, it would be much better if we can do this, but it's, but it's non-trivial. We're also in the process of doing some real production engineering on, uh, on this, the Kia Soul implementation that we build. So when we build a car, we build it with like a whole bunch of power bus systems and extra cabling and sensor pinouts and bracketry. Uh, so we're doing all the CAD modeling and, and production work to get ready to actually, sh actually provide bombs and full build uh, specs for companies that want to do this themselves. We don't really want to be a, be a car build company. Um, but, you know, this stuff has to be done, and so if you're looking to build a fleet, uh, soon we'll have full production engineering done on that. And then finally, we really want to partner with, uh, with a Tier 1, so if you're a Tier 1 sitting in the audience, we would love to partner with you uh, to build this into, into ASLD hardware, right? It's not ideal that it's, that it's Arduino uh, in, terms of, in terms of safety and resilience. We think that, uh, you know, a little, a little ECU implementation on ASLD hardware would be a would be a great move, not only for the project, but also for the companies that might be interested in, um, in building their own systems. Or there's just a lot of, a lot of good reasons to contribute to, the, to this. I want, while I'm here, and I've got all your, all your eyes, I wanted to mention this. This is pretty cool. So we just partnered with Udacity. Did anyone see this announcement? Is anyone aware of the, the self-racing cars event in the US? Yeah, some, some people. Self-racing cars is a hilarious track day organized by a guy named Joshua Schachter who started Delicious, if anyone remembers that. Uh, uh, so this is a it's a really cool event where basically a whole bunch of startups in the Bay come and, uh, and show off their latest autonomous driving stuff on a race course and, uh, and try and drive fast. So last year it was a total junk show. Like, no, like people, the fastest laps were like average 12 miles an hour or something terrible. <laughs> racing, uh, and all done by like, econ you know, hilarious economy cars like Kia Souls. So, uh, we, so this year I expect it to be much better. If you're, if you're not aware, Udacity has this, has this really cool um, program now where they're, where they're training people to do, or uh, they have their self-driving cars nano degree. So probably some people are in it here, I'm guessing. And, uh, the, uh, and so they're, gonna, they're organizing a set of teams that will then come in and bolt into an OSC, or two OSCC cars that we're providing. And, uh, and then race them, around the, race them around the track. So this is the beginnings of that type of interface for the automotive industry. We might have to hack our way to it, but this is a big message for the auto industry is like, we need interfaces, uh, that breeds innovation. And so look, here, we give you cars, other teams who've never seen them before are gonna come bolt in and drive them really fast around a racetrack. There's nothing wrong, bad that could happen there, right? Here's a cool video from last year. Uh, Look, look at that guy. Yeah, you get to dress, you know, however you want. There's flags. Uh, there's the... <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, this is a, just to give you a, an idea of the type of cars that, that uh, uh, we'll make available there. If you are interested in racing those cars, you know, or you have, a, you know, you have algorithms or whatever, please you know, let me know afterwards and we'd be happy to get you in the running. Uh, I don't think it should just be Udacity students that are able to do this. So this is the type of car that we provide. It's got computers in the back and um, here it is about to, about to go out on the track. This is kind of gives you an idea of how the event is. Here's slow-mo. We're not actually driving that fast. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yep. See, been talking about it some more. But look how slow that Velodyne's spinning. Um, anyway, so we provided with all these cool sensors on board, which I'm sure a lot of you, if you're developing self-driving cars, would love to get your hands on. We'd be happy to provide you not only data for uh, for this, but also but also give you a chance to to get on the car and race it around, or just show up and hang out and see you know see what the industry is doing in the in their garage. Uh, there's usually no big OEMs or anybody at the, or there shouldn't be any big OEMs or anybody at this event. It's totally startups. So, pretty cool. How can you get involved? Here's a 
old shot of the repo, and uh, you can you can make a Kia Soul yourself. It's really not that hard. We'll be launching we'll be launching our, our, our actual specific Kia Soul build um, manual in the next you know couple weeks, couple months. That I'll show you not only sort of like what wires to cut and where to run them and all that fun stuff. Uh, you can reverse engineer some CAN signals, as I mentioned. That's an important thing that we ne need to get done. Uh, you can point it to different cars. If you've got a car that you think you want to run it on, uh, send us an email and we will tell you how to do that. Or you can try and parse it from the docs. But if you're like still learning this stuff, it might be hard. We're happy to help you out. Um, for instance, we just evaluated Kia Sportage. It's not going to work. Sorry. Uh, so um, you know, let, let's find let's find other cars in which this works on. Right? The, you know, typically the simpler the car, the cheaper, the better. Uh, and then and then improve and extend the existing designs. Like for, we're not electrical engineers. We had the the circuit board designs like contracted. We think they're pretty good. We think they could be way better. Uh, the software as well. So you know, please get in there and and uh, and tell us what for. Actually, one of the great things the great thing about open source, right, is that like it's completely you know ruthless and has no pity for you. And so like we've gotten some really critical comments that have dramatically improved the quality of the, of the repo uh, already. So that's been awesome. Even without contributions, that's super valuable. Licensing, we did three licenses on the, on the framework. So the hardware is all Creative Commons. Uh, that's all the circuit boards and pictures and diagrams and all that fun stuff. The firmware is GPL v3. We really think that that should not be a, a proprietary type thing. If you're going to improve the firmware, uh, then that would be great, and uh, we, we should definitely share that. Uh, but the software side, we provide a little joystick uh, controller app that doesn't require our framework or anything like that, PolySync. Um, and so that's MIT, and you know, extend away. And then I would be negligent if I didn't say, look, please do not use this on public roads or in any place. We have not guaranteed its safety. We're trying to make something better, but I can in no way condone you using this in, uh, you know, in uh, with uh, you know, non-controlled environments, without a safety driver, all these things. So uh, if you do that, you're taking your fate in your own hands. Uh, but it's probably better than putting hobby servos on your car. That's it. I think we have some time for questions. Uh, in the front. Um, is it legal what, are you do, what we are doing? <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, is it legal what we are doing? Or rather, is it illegal? Can Kia sue you because you are reversing the systems and uh, using for commercial purposes? Uh, so that's part of why we open source this. We're not using it for commercial purposes. It's, it's, it's free for everybody. So uh, we. We have our, our lawyers have looked at that, and we, we believe that we are okay on it uh, because we are we are working on you know things that we have freely bought and we own. Um, we are uh, we are not publishing any proprietary information about the Kia Soul. In the case of where we need wiring diagrams and things, we manufacture those ourselves. So uh, we believe that we're that yes, it's legal. Yes. It is legal. It's legal both the DMCA. Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which allows you to reverse engineer your own equipment for safety and security. And it's also fair use under copyright. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for the talk. I see it's like a low level framework um, yes, for sensory and uh, control the car. Are you integrating into other network like cross road operating system or any other thing in the world? Sure. Uh, so the, the question was, uh, 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 this gentleman sees this as a low-level framework. Are we integrating with other sensors and frameworks like ROS? Uh, so in the other world of PolySync, yes, we provide lots of sensor drivers, we record and replay facility. We, have, we bridge to ROS to provide a stable uh, underlying sensor layer for that, for that framework. This is just meant to be a, 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 like a firmware, like low-level control system. So if you want to... Uh, if, if you want to extend it to, like, build a ROS driver for it, please do. Yeah. Um, I probably should pick someone in the back. Was there? How about you? Uh, do you plan on integrating or working with Comma AI? <laughs> the question was, uh, do we plan on integrating or working with Comma.ai? I'm not sure that anybody really works with Comma.ai. Uh, uh, we, we have talked about uh, extending OSCC to be controlled by their, you know, Drive Pilot and, and Comma Neo system. And we poked, it, poked at it ourselves. That's another thing like Ross. You know, that'd be a great thing to see the community do. 
uh, we're not an applications company, so um, they are. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. So the question is, what's the business model behind OSCC? Is it a hobby, or and how do we get funding? OSCC, as I, I tried to get in the, in the beginning, OSCC is, is unilaterally like good for our business for as a platform company, and so we fund that side of the, the, the product freely. Like it's good for our engineers to to learn more about about cars, to learn more about writing safety critical code. Uh, we think that it's great. Like it's a it's a great um, thing for us to give to the community and creates goodwill. Uh, and then we do make a little bit of money off of it when we build uh, cars for people, and we we can do we do trainings and things like that. So we do that we do that type of model around OSCC. But largely, it's not meant to be a revenue generator for us. It's really meant to be an enabler of the community, and we think that everyone will eventually grow up and want to use PolySync because they love us. Yeah. Good. Uh, do we have a plan to integrate uh, flight recorder near the can gateway? Uh, okay, the question was, do we have a plan to integrate a flight recorder near the CAN gateway? So uh, that's functionality that we do in PolySync with much more fidelity than that. In terms of a flight recorder for CAN, uh, there's stuff out there for, that you can log to like SD cards and things like that. So um, no plans to do that, but that would be a great, a great project. Ah, okay. Uh, the question was, does the, does the PID for steering or uh, assuming for other things need to be tuned for every car? Um, so far, so far for Kia Souls, we haven't had to do any retuning of the PID. So those seem to be pretty consistent. Other cars, certainly you would have to, right? So you just have different ranges of sensors and things like that that would require retuning. Um, so yeah, we try. I think that we are. We had that stuff formerly hard coded, and we're and we're pulling it out in the configuration file, so we'll be able to do that easier. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so all these are uh, these are great questions, but generally, but generally giving me a chance to plug PolySync, uh, which is that which is that we uh, when you get up to the things like sensor layer and uh, and and you know decision layer and things like that of, of the autonomous car, those are things that we enable through PolySync. We don't, but but we're not an application company, so we don't build sensor fusion. We don't build uh, object recognition algorithms. This is meant to be completely low level. Just give you an interface where if you say go 30 degrees left, the car does it. Yep, yep. Thank you, though, <laughs> for that. Good. I'm sorry. Yes. Where are they operating? Uh, okay. So uh, the question was, we have we built four cars. Where are they currently operating? Uh, two of those cars are our own, so they operate in in Portland area and in our shop. Um, not under autonomous control on public roads. We have closed course uh, control areas. And the other two, one, one was built for a startup that I can't tell you who it is in the Bay Area, and the other one was built for University of Michigan for the M City track there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks everybody. Cool.